Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, there's a certain fighter I want to discuss and he falls somewhere on the biggest frauds in the MMA of all time list. I, earlier in my career, early in my YouTube career, I made a video talking about you know a certain fighter in Brian Ortega, how he's one of the biggest frauds in MMA. And today I wanted to revisit that style of video, revisit that kind of tier list, whatever you want to call it, of some of the biggest frauds in MMA. I'm going to be creating a whole video series, and I'm probably going to create this and make it into a playlist that you can view on my channel so you can go and find all the videos very easily. But I'm going to continue to make videos like this where I talk about the biggest frauds in MMA, and I'm going to start listing out all these different fighters. And, you know, you may see some of your favorite fighters on this list very, very soon. You know, in the near future, you may see some fighters that you feel very strongly in a positive way about or in a very negative way. And you're just going to have to watch and find out. But the fighter we're discussing today is Colby Covington. And Colby Covington has managed to talk himself into a title shot essentially for the third time now. Colby Covington has talked himself into another title shot. He's earning another undeserved title shot with another win. You know, it's like he gets a title shot because he beats a retired fighter. Then he gets a title shot. Then he loses, whether it's brutally loses or whatever. Then he fights another retired fighter. He earns himself another title shot. Then he fights another retired, uh, retired fighter. He earns himself another title shot. And I'm going to be looking today at Colby Covington's resume, his inactivity, his claims for the title, his claims for a title shot, whatever. And I'm also going to be discussing Colby's fans. I don't really like to discuss uh, fighters' personalities, stuff outside the actor. I don't discuss it very often. It's very, very rare that I do. Like, you'll never see me make a video on Ian Gary and this whole situation. I'm not even going to entertain those kind of conversations. It's ridiculous. It's pathetic. And anyone making videos on things like that is just looking for clicks. This video is not for clicks. Colby, Co I could easily make a video saying why Colby Covington is secretly the best fighter in the UFC. Why, why I love Colby Covington. Why everyone should love Colby Covington. You know, I can easily make a video like that where everyone's like, "Oh, I hate Colby." Let me click on this video, and I can get some easy clicks. I'm giving you the honest facts in this video. I'm the god honest truth. How I truly feel about Colby as a fighter, and and I'm not even gonna look at his personality really. It's gonna be very much looking at what he has said in talks of his title shot, in talks of other fighters in the division, in a somewhat serious manner, and then also what he's actually done as a fighter. I don't care about what he said at that one, you know, UFC 268, oh, the pre-fight or the post-fight press conference. I don't care about any of that. I don't care that, oh, he called Leon Edwards mumble mouth. I don't care about that kind of stuff. We're discussing Colby Covington as a fighter. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to discuss in today's video is Colby Covington's inactivity. And what we got to start off with is discussing his new fight. So Colby Covington was announced via Dana White. He did one of those, you know, mega announcement videos where he has his like little smirk on and into the profile pic where it's a little thumbnail. It, it, those videos are awesome. Dana's doing these huge announcements these days. I absolutely love it. And he did one of those announcement videos. And, uh, you know, Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards for UFC 296 was announced absolutely incredible fight you know i would not say this is a fight that really uh speaks uh volumes to merit and meritocracy it's very much a fight that was only materialized because of colby covington's mouth you know what i mean but at the end of the day it's still a fight that i'm excited to see it's still a fight that i care about and that's why i'm making a video on it today but colby covington scheduled a fight i believe december 16th or it's either later in december 2023 you know ufc 296 uh, obviously, he's fighting Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards looking to make his second UFC welterweight title defense. I already did an early prediction when this fight was announced. I picked Leon, or I actually picked Colby Covington via decision. Now, I'd actually like to change my pick. I did not make a video on this when I changed my pick. But in the meantime, you know, since making that video, I've kind of thought about it a little bit. I would like to change my pick to uh, Leon Edwards. I think he's going to get it done. Regardless, Colby Covington's inactivity. So Colby Covington is scheduled to fight at UFC 296, the last pay-per-view of the year in 2023. Well, Colby Covington, actually, the last time that he fought, as crazy as this is, the last time that Colby Covington fought was one of the first pay-per-views of 2022. So he's gone from one of the first pay-per-views of 2022 to literally the last pay-per-view of 2023. He has been inactive for nearly two whole years. It has been over a year and a half since Colby Covington has last fought. And by the time he returns to the Octagon, it's probably going to be another year after UFC 296. Best case scenario, the best case scenario 
The earliest that we see Colby Covington fight again is probably going to be around late 2024 to even early 2025. And if he sits out on another hiatus like he did in his last hiatus after beating Jorge Masvidal at UFC 272, we very likely could not see Colby Covington return to the octagon until mid to late 2025. As crazy as that sounds, he will not be back in the octagon if he takes another hiatus like this until nearly 2026. That is absolute insanity. And historically, since 2017, Colby Covington has only fought once a year. So he's not an active fighter. You know, you look at all these guys. Alex Bejeda is a perfect example. He's one of my favorite fighters. And the number one thing I always talk about is the thing that I care most about in any fighter is not what they said on the mic, not what, how good they are at press conferences, not how flashy their style is. As long as a fighter is really active, that's the biggest thing. Like, being active and exciting is awesome. Like Alex Mahed is exciting. Uh, Islam Makhachev is exciting. Alexander Volkanovsky is exciting. Those are three fighters that are incredibly exciting and incredibly active. And those are some of my favorite fighters to this day. But at the end of the day, as long as you're active, I really don't care how boring you are. At least you're fighting. At least we continuously get to see you in the octagon. Guys that take a year out without an injury, that have no excuse. And people are going to bring up the, oh, Colby Covington had a court case going on. He couldn't fight it, this and that. Colby Covington was literally the he was literally the backup fighter for UFC 286, which means all the way back in early 2023, he was already cleared to fight. Early 2023, he was cleared to fight. And it's not like, oh, Colby Covington was cleared to fight and then immediately stepped in on to backup. Colby Covington was very likely cleared to fight since before UFC 286. He was very likely cleared to fight early, I mean, literally at the beginning of 2023, somewhere around then. So Colby Covington's been cleared to fight for a goddamn almost a year, and he still hasn't stepped in the octagon. And he's not stepping in the octagon until late December. It's going to be another like two weeks till Colby Covington is actually in the octagon. It's crazy how inactive he is. He literally fights once a year. You look at his fights with whether it's RDA, you know, whether it's against uh, Robbie Lawler, whether it's against Woodley, Usman, Usman the rematch, uh, you know, Jorge Masvidal, it doesn't matter. All those fights are literally a year apart, except for the, you know, second Usman fight all the way up to the Jorge fight. And then Jorge until this fight is going to be two whole years. So he's historically been a super, super inactive fighter. And then we actually look at his resume. When you look at, take a look at Colby Covington's resume, it's nothing to be proud about. You look at his resume, he has two losses to Usman. And his whole kind of claim to the title is, oh, he almost beat Usman in the first fight. Of course, the fight was very, very close. In fact, going into the fifth round, one judge had it for Colby. One judge had it for Usman. It's a very competitive fight. Guess what? He got brutally finished and knocked out in the fifth round. He got TKO'd brutally. His face was literally broken in half by Kamaru Usman. I don't care how many rounds you won. His face was broken in half. And in fact, I'll put a clip up on screen right now of Usman discussing this as Colby was literally, out, you know, had the headset on ESPN interview style where they're both interviewing them. And Colby's just yapping and yapping. And Usman goes, I broke your face. Sam, do you care about me? No, yeah, because you got the worst decision in the history of the sport. No, Somebody bad calls against me. I, I, oh, I, I, no, no, you didn't. I stood right up. That wasn't even close. No, face. Marty Fake Newsman. You're, I you broke, broke You didn't break my face. face. I got right up and protested Look right away. That was a Look fake stoppage, me. fake rap, broke fake fight. Wait till I see you next time. Wait till I see you next time, Marty Fake Newsman. You're dead. You're dead. Am we I? got unfinished business. Really? You know what I mean? Usman literally could not have said it better. He broke Colby Covington's face. He TKO'd him brutally. And people are going to talk about, oh, Goddard saved Usman. Goddard saved Usman. Colby Covington literally got dropped two times in the span of like a minute. He was getting brutally ground and pounded on the ground. Of course, some of that really late ground and pound wasn't doing too much. Colby wasn't doing anything. All he was doing was literally holding on to the ball sack of Kamaru Usman begging for Goddard to stop the fight. The moment Goddard stops, he gets up, he goes, oh, Goddard, what were you doing? Terrible stop. He starts complaining about it. He was literally out. Colby Covington was done. He was done. That fight, if if they would have gotten stood up again, if Goddard would have broken it up and stood it up, Colby would have gotten dropped again. He would have gotten finished. He would have gotten put out cold. Colby Covington took one of the most embarrassing beatings of his life. All the way back, I believe it was what? I, I don't know exactly what card it was. All the way back when he fought Usman in the first fight. Then he fights Usman at UFC 268. 
And once again, oh, it was a really close fight. His claim to the title is two losses to Kamaru Usman. We look at his other fights. Tyra Woodley happens to be retired. The guy that is on Jake Paul's highlight reel. One of his claims to the title. Colby Covington's claim to his rematch against Kamaru Usman was one, that he got brutally finished in an exciting fight. And two, that he beat Jake Paul's leftovers. Literally Jake Paul's leftovers who happens to be retired to this day. You look at his next fight. After that, after he fights Usman, he fights Jorge Masvidal. Hmm. Something's interesting. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. What about, you know, what about Jorge Masvidal is, you know, indicative? What about, you know, Jorge Masvidal is very similar to a guy like Tyra Woodley? Huh. Oh, they're, they're both retired. So his last two fighters that are not Kamaru Usman that he's beaten happen to be retired. We look past that. You know, we look at Robbie Lawler, also retired. So we look at his last three opponents that are Kamaru Usman. All of them are retired. His last three opponents that are not for the belt, his last three contender matchups are all retired to this day. Colby Covington has one of the most abysmal resumes ever. And people are going to talk about, oh, the RDA fight, the RDA fight. RDA is a lightweight. He is literally a lightweight. And the fact that RDA went out there and had a close competitive decision with Colby Covington took him down multiple times, literally took down Colby Covington multiple times and stuffed well over half of his takedowns, you know, it was not an impressive performance from a guy like Colby Covington, a guy that's talked about as being one of the best grapplers in the UFC. He literally couldn't even consistently take down Rafael Dos Anjos, who was getting taken down by Vicente Luque. You know what I mean? Who's getting reversed up against the fence by Vicente Luque. Is Vicente Luque a better wrestler than Colby Covington? I mean, it is, it is actually insanity to look at how many title shots Colby Covington has gotten and then you take a look at his resume and it's absolutely abysmal. So Colby Covington has been sitting on the sidelines begging for a title shot ever since he got that win over, you know, Jorge Masvidal. And you literally have to go back into a time machine to even quantify that fight, to even look at it and go, oh man, oh, he really got that win there. And they got that win there. He's really built up a, built up a strong, you know, defense for his title shot, a strong claim to the title. No, no, no. You literally have to go into a time machine and look at the dead body of Jorge Masvidal, who's literally retired. You know what I mean? He's looking at Jake Paul as a future matchup. You know what I mean? Jorge Masvidal is not an impressive win at this stage in his career. He's literally retired. That's the stage in his career. He literally is retired. He got absolutely starched by uh, Kamaru Usman, takes some more losses, fights Colby Covington, loses, um, you know what I mean? Loses to Gilbert Burns, gets on a three-fight losing streak and retires. Not an impressive win in the slightest. And he really has one of the worst claims to the title, but he continues. He continues to sit there on the sidelines and just get on his hands and knees and start literally sucking the farts out of Dana White's asshole so that Dana White will gift him another title shot. And, you know, Dana White's going to sit there and defend it. Like, oh, Colby Covington's such a draw. Colby Covington is not a draw. In fact, people always bring this up. Colby Covington fans always bring this up. Colby's such a draw. That's why he gets the title shot. No one wants to see Bilal. Bilal's not a draw. Bilal puts people to sleep. You know, he sells negative pay-per-view numbers. I Honestly, if Bilal fights in Saudi Arabia and Colby fights in, uh, where is he from? Florida? He fights in Miami? Honestly, I think Bilal in Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi is a bigger star than Colby Covington is in Miami. And people are going to call me crazy. The Abu Dhabi fans are going to get behind Bilal more than, than the Miami fans are ever going to get behind Colby. Colby has more haters in Miami than Bilal has fans in Abu Dhabi. It, it, I mean, Colby is not a draw. People always bring this up. The only pay-per-view Colby Covington has sold, that he's ever been on, that sold over 500,000 pay-per-view buys is UFC 286 or UFC 268. Guess what? The only the, that's the only card in his entire career that sold over 500,000 buys. And 500,000 buys isn't even that crazy. The only reason why it's looked at as that crazy these days is because how shit the pay-per-views do these days. Pay-per-views are not doing that well these days. You know, Colby Covington is talking about as being this massive draw. The reason why UFC 268 did so well is because you had the rematch, a massive rematch between Colby Covington and Kamaru Usman. You had another title fight in Rose Nam Yunus versus Sean Wei Lee. And you had one of the biggest fights of all time in Justin Gaethje versus Michael Chandler. That is literally a top five biggest lightweight fight in all of MMA history. You know what I mean? And it's one of the most exciting fights ever as well. On top of that, the card was just stacked from bottom to top. So, of course, you stack a pay-per-view card 
Colby Covington happens to be on there. I Don't get me wrong. He definitely contributed to the pay-per-view. You put Leon Edwards on there, I don't think it sells as many pay-per-views. But at the end of the day, it still would have sold more than 500K with Leon Edwards on there. It only sold 700,000 pay-per-view buys because you had absolute megastars on there like Kamaru Usman, like Justin Gaethje, like Michael Chandler. These are massive, massive stars. And these fighters are way bigger than Colby Covington. Justin Gaethje, Michael Chandler, and Kamaru Usman are all much bigger stars and draws than a guy like Colby Covington. And this is simply fact. You look at their social media engagement. You look at the history of all their pay-per-views they've been on. They are bigger stars than Colby Covington. They get more pop from the arena. This is proven fact. This is literally just a fact. There is no way to debate this. Colby Covington, by whatever metric you're trying to say, he literally sold 200,000 pay-per-view buys at UFC 272 against, you know, Jorge Masvidal. That is not indicative of being a pay-per-view draw. Now, your version of pay-per-view draw might be selling 100,000 pay-per-view buys. Maybe that's your version of a draw. But for me, I, I, for me to call someone a substantial pay-per-view draw, they need to be selling at minimum consistently 500,000 pay-per-view buys on any card they're on. They need to be drawing 500,000 buys on a mid to decent pay-per-view. A big pay-per-view should be able to sell seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand, closer to a million pay-per-views. And you're probably saying, well, that's no one. That's no one but Connor and this guy. That's why there's not that many draws in MMA. That's the case. There's literally not that many draws. And there's almost no one in MMA, I would say, is substantial enough of a draw to just warrant a title shot off of a bad win, like, you know, Jorge Masvidal, for example, who happens to be retired. The last things I want to discuss in today's video are Colby Covington's fans and Colby Covington's uh, talks of Leon Edwards and him his meritocracy for the title. You know what I mean? Leon Edwards, he got his title shot at UFC 278, knocked out Kamaru Uzma with a head kick. And on James Lynch's podcast, James Lynch's talk show, Colby Covington was interviewed, you know, discussing his up and coming title fight with uh, Leon Edwards, at UFC 296. And James Lynch asked him, do you think that Leon Edwards deserved the title shot at UFC 278? And Colby Covington starts talking about how, no, Leon Edwards didn't deserve the title shot. And the reason why is Colby Covington goes in to talk about how you can't just beat an unranked, washed up bum in Nate Diaz. He's referring to Nate Diaz. You can't just beat an unranked, washed up bum, sit out for a year, and then beg for a title shot. You can't just do that. That's what Leon Edwards did. He's a bum. Um, you want to keep active because I know it's been tough and a lot of things I know beyond your control as well. Um, do you, do you want to like, get back to fighting three, four times a year? Of course, you know, I, you know, I want to fight again in March. You know, this is ridiculous that I've had to wait this long, but this is a guy, you know, that sat out for a year and a half after he beat up an, a washed up Nate Diaz and then demanded a title shot. So this guy is the most privileged of all privilege and he hasn't earned anything. Well, huh? I really had to put my thinking cap on for a second. I really had to start thinking for a second and, you know, getting all the piece of the puzzle connected, really start piecing all this together because it sounded quite interesting. In fact, it sounded quite familiar when Colby Covington was discussing this. The reason why is because Colby Covington is referring to himself. Colby Covington be a washed up bum, one fight away from retirement in Jorge Masvidal, sat out for damn near two years and begged, actually literally sucked the farts out of Dana White's ass, brown nosed him for days and begged for a title shot. Colby Covington is literally referring to himself in the third person. It's beyond pathetic. And I'm not going to get into his personality. I'm not going to get into all the corny, pre-written, scripted lines that he pays the hobo across the street to write for him. I'm not going to get into that. It's corny. We all know it's a shtick. We all know he's doing it. He's putting on a mask because he's not comfortable being himself. You know, he's not, uh, he's not confident that he can uh, pull views and get fans by actually using his own personality, being himself, he has to put on a mask so that people will like him or dislike him. Uh, he, you know, it, it, I'm not even going to get into that. But Colby Covington, he's he's just the epitome of hypocrisy. He's the epitome of hypocrisy, and he's being serious in this moment. He truly believes that Leon Edwards didn't deserve a title shot. Meanwhile, he's doing the exact same thing. And no, Colby Covington is not some promotional genius. If he was a promotional genius, he would sell more than 200,000 pay-per-view buys against a substantial draw in Jorge Masvidal. You know what I mean? He's a bum. Colby Covington's a bum. He's not a pay-per-view draw. And his fans are going to sit there and say, oh, well, he almost beat Kamaru Usman and Goddard saved Usman and all this other, I mean, absolutely, he, 
hypocrisy, his hysterical rhetoric, this hysterical comments made by Kobe Covington fans saying, oh, he's a draw and this and that. And no one wants to see this guy. Dude, let me know right now in the comments. Everyone watching this video right now, let me know down below in the comments. Would you rather see Leon Edwards versus Kobe Covington in a full camp, no strings attached, no nothing, Kobe Covington versus Leon Edwards full camp, or would you rather see Shavkat Rachmanov versus Bilal Muhammad full camp, no uh, no strings attached? Me personally, I want to see Shavkat versus Bilal because I believe Bilal is a more exciting fighter than Kobe. And don't even get me started on Shavkat. He's more exciting than Kobe, Bilal, and uh, Leon Edwards combined. I'd rather see that. You know, Shavkat, Rachmanov versus Ian Gary for the welterweight title. You know, I'm sold on that. I'd rather see that a million times over than Colby Covington, the most boring fighter in the welterweight division versus Leon Edwards, one of the most boring fighters in the welterweight division. I'd rather see that. You know what I mean? I, I literally, any day of the week, I'd rather see that fight, even though it doesn't make sense, even though there's already a champion and this and that, it doesn't matter. You know, I, people are going to talk about, oh, he's so exciting and this and that, he pulls views, he's a draw. Dude, it, Colby Covington is not a draw. He's not a draw. I'd rather see so many other matchups in the welterweight division for the title than Colby versus Leon. I don't understand why we're literally having to hold up the division just to put on this stinker between Colby and Leon. You know what I mean? It's not that compelling of a matchup. I'm still making a video on it. I'm still going to discuss it. I'm an, M I'm an MMA content creator. But at the end of the day, I'm just not that sold on this matchup. And I honestly don't really care that much. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you do not miss another upload. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.